Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Delmar again, and today I got a lot of cool things to show you, and that is to create a new Unity 3D project that is going to work with the HoloLens 2. I'm also going to show you some of the components that we need to be bringing in, such as the MRTK, which is the Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit that Microsoft is providing for Unity developers. I also want to show you what we need to do in order to develop and actually push to the device and then how we can run within Unity and actually see what's happening in the HoloLens. So there's a lot that we need to do. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right, guys, so I'm going to start by showing you the scene that we're going to be building to the device. So in this case, I want to run it in the Unity editor. I also have the holographic XR component. I'm going to show you how to set that up as well. Let's go ahead and hit play and I'm going to show you how we can interact with this scene. So basically standing up right now and I'm just looking at the, you know, through my HoloLens, I can interact with objects, I can bring them to me, I can just basically change the position. One of the cool things I can also do is I can rotate my hand and as I rotate my hand, the object is rotating. And this one, this one is always visible. So if I were to select this other one as well, I can also do a rotation. This one doesn't have any grids around it, so Microsoft is just showing you different ways to select objects. This one as well, if we go here, I can rotate it as well. Looks like this one is, you know, constrained on the Y axis. Another component in here that I can do is I can also, if I wanted to, you know, scroll down and I scroll up, that part is currently working just fine. I can also grab the cheese. This one says show all handles on proximity. So you can see that as soon as I let go, the handles are shown. So if I get close to me, I can just, you know, put it away. Let's see what else we have in here. We also have a bounding box. So if I want to make it, you know, smaller, we can make it bigger. We can also do that. I can also grab it from the other area if I wanted to. I believe I can also, you know, move it around if I wanted to. Let's just go ahead and put it right above me. And maybe right here, or maybe I want to bring it close to me. So I can do completely interact with that, with that object. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it away. Let's go ahead and put it over there. And then let's see what else we have in here. We just have, you know, different press interactions that we can, that we can play with. I also have a few touch interactions in here that we can also initiate. The other cool things are these sliders. So if I want to bring it down, it changes the color of the, you know, the actual model that is be behind it. I can also grab the green and if I wanted to do that. Let me do that one more time. And there we go. We can also change the color. So there's all those pinch sliders that you can interact with. This one is really cool. I can, you know, grab the, look at the points as I am getting this object close to me. And it just has, you know, like a legend of different parts of the earth. So you can see the inner core, outer core, the mantle, and also the cross. And another thing that I can do, let's see, I, wanna, I wanted to grab this item. I can also rotate it. Maybe I wanted to put this cup, you know, upside down. I can, I can also do that. There's also another object in here that I can grab. And we can just, yeah, there we go. So you can interact with that. The other Unity UI examples that MRTK has is, you know, you can use the sliders, of course. You can, let me see if I can do that one more time. I can also use buttons. Those ones are all working. We can do the fields. We can do drop downs. And drop downs also work really well. I can also interact with these windows, which is really cool. Everything in here is interactable. So if I want to bring it close to me, I can do that. If I want to close the window, I believe I can also do that. There we go can also do this one right here. We can bring it in, I can bring it close. And there's just different, you know, UI components that we can interact with. So what I want to do now is I want to just focus on, I'm just going to go ahead and hit play and stop it. And what I want to do is I want to focus on some of the components that you're going to need to, you know, to achieve this. And if you want to build it, what do you need to do to build it? So there's a lot of things that we need to do. And to do, to start, we're going to go into the documentation. So I'm going to be sharing this information with you. You're gonna go into docs at Microsoft.com, Windows and Mixed Reality with the culture. And they're gonna be giving you enough information to get going. I'm just gonna to try to simplify it for you. So if you go to I am a developer, this gives you different options. So if you're an Unreal developer, if you're a JavaScript native, in our case we, you know, most of the people that follow me are Unity developers. So we're gonna go ahead and select Unity. So you can also go into the, the Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit for Unity. So here's the link. And then this is just basically going to walk you through everything that is needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Getting Started Guide. And I already did a lot of these things, but I'm going to show you what you need to do. So 
You're gonna need Visual Studio 2018. This is the one that I that I currently have. Just download it and then install it. And when you install it, just, just keep a couple of things in mind. I'm gonna show you what components I have so that I can save you some time. So if I go into Add or Remove Programs, and we go into Visual Studio, and you look at the installer, and I'm gonna go into Modify so that you know what components you'll need. Just gonna go ahead and modify that. And a couple of things that I didn't have when I was working on this initially, like three hours ago, is I didn't have the I didn't have the desktop development with C++. That is a requirement. And I also didn't have the universal Windows platform development. So make sure that you have those two. Otherwise, this is not going to work. It's going to tell you that you're missing, you know, you're missing components. And obviously, you're going to need the game development with Unity if you're running, you know, you're, mo most of you are running in Windows. And specifically for the HoloLens. So if you're running in Windows with HoloLens, which I think is a requirement, you're going to need this as well. All right, so those three components are required. Let's go ahead and close out of this. So once you get Visual Studio, you're also going to need, of course, you're going to need Unity. The minimum version for Unity is going to be 2018.4.x. The one that I have right now that I'm running on is 2018.3.5.f1. So I recommend that you keep, you know, you, you use one of the latest versions because at least the one that I'm using right now because that's the one that I tested everything with. That way you can follow along and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot easier. The other component that you're going to need is going to be the Windows SDK, so make sure you download that. I didn't think it was it was necessary at the beginning, and then I started getting errors, so then I went back and downloaded it and installed it. So just go ahead and install that package, that installer. And then the other things that you're going to need as well are going to be the actual MRTK component, right? So if you go into the, the MRTK Unity package, you can just click on that. This is going to tell you a couple of things that you're going to need. You're going to need the, the, the one that is required. It's going to be the Mixed Reality Toolkit Unity Foundation Unity Package. So you can download that from the release page that they, they put in here. So let me go ahead and close out of all the other tabs. That way we have everything clean. But if you click on that, it's going to take you to you know GitHub. And then in GitHub, you can just download everything that you need. In my case, I downloaded the, the examples. I downloaded the extensions. I downloaded the foundation. This one is a required, but these two are additional. The scene that I have right now that I show you, this one is in the example. So you might as well download that because that's the one that I did. That way you guys can follow along. And then this Unity tools is also required if you need to upgrade your project. So I didn't do this one, but if you want to do it, you can do it. It's just really up to you. Just know that that is available there. So let's go ahead and go back and so now that you have those, you're going to get something like this. If I go into my downloads, these are going to be the packages that I downloaded. It looks like I did download the tools as well. And I also downloaded the universal Windows platform support for Unity. If you didn't do that part, that is going to be also required. So let me go ahead and do that. I didn't show you that part. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Unity Hub. And if you notice, I'm using, like I said, 2019.3.5 F1. And if I go to the installs, and we look at that installation. That installation also has the Windows build support. You're going to need that because we're going to be building to, you know, to that platform. So make sure that you have that. If you don't have it, you can just click on these three dots, add modules, and then you can just go and, and you know, actually select the Windows build support, and that's going to, you know, that's going to make it work. So let's go ahead and close out of this, and then minimize this. So that is the, you know, some of the require the requirements that you'll need there. The, the next thing that you're going to need is, you know, you're going to need Unity, but you're going to need to set up a couple, couple settings in Unity that we're going to need in order for this to work. So we did this part, we did the import. So once you, once you get things going, you're going to create a new Unity project, so, which is what I did, but I'm going to show you how to do that so that we can do it from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and click on New, and I'm going to select that this is going to be a 3D project, and we're going to go ahead and call it, we can just call it Hello. Holo Lens 2, and then we can click on Create. That's going to be creating the new 3D project. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and open this my, my downloads. In your case, you're going to go in and download those from this link. Once you download them in the, uh, from the links, you're going to have these basically these Unity packages. So let's just wait until the project gets created. Once it gets created, I'm going to start with the foundation. We're going to do the extensions, we're going to do the examples, and then we'll do the tools last. So it looks like this is now creating the project. 
All right, guys, so it looks at the project I created. So now what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and double click on my package for foundation. It's going to say, what you know, what do you want to open the, the, the actual package with? I'm going to say, yeah, I want to open it with the Unity Editor. It's going to decompress and show you all the different files that are included in that package. So these are all the packages, the, all the files that are included in the package. So there's just a lot of things that Microsoft is including. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Import. All right, so it looks like that finished importing. So now we're going to get a pop-up from MRTK telling us if we want to apply the default settings. I said apply, so just go ahead and click on apply. Once you click on apply, it's going to basically just add setting changes to your project. And we should be almost done with this package, and then we just need to go into the, not the other package. All right, so it looks like everything in there is done. It's going to go ahead and close that. So the next one that we are going to need are going to be the actual, I'm just going to do the extensions next. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it looks like that package is completed. Let's go ahead and do the examples now. And we can click on import. All right, I think one more package, guys, and we're done with the packages. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the Unity tools and click on import. Okay, so that part is completed. Let's go ahead and look at the examples that we have right here by going into MRTK, examples demos and then the one that i was running was the hand tracking one so i'm just going to go ahead and look at that one and we can just look at the first one so this is going to prompt you to import the text mesh pro components just go ahead and click on import because they're using that for the ui okay so it looks like that part is done as well and i'm just going to go ahead and make these gizmos just a little bit smaller so that we can see everything that is happening in here so this is a scene that i show you on the beginning of the video let me go ahead and just we're going to enable the gizmos, but I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. There we go. So this is the same scene that I show you right at the beginning of the video. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and make a couple more changes. I'm going to go, he go ahead and go into build settings, add this scene as one of the open scenes. And if you did everything I told you from the beginning of the video, you shouldn't have any messages in here. But if you get a message saying that, you know, perhaps you don't have the Windows SDK installed, or you don't have Visual Studio with the proper tools installed, make sure that you do those. Otherwise, this is gonna, it's gonna give you errors when we build. So, so far, this is good. It's showing everything that we need. The target device, I mean, you can set it to HoloLens. I did it any device and it actually worked. You can also, the architecture, you can either do x64. I think that's what I did before as well, and everything worked. And then in Visual Studio, I ran the ARM64 and everything worked there. So the other thing that is important here is the minimum platform version. If you don't have the SDK, it's going to give you in red here that you don't have it. The same thing with Visual Studio. And then we're just going to leave this as local machine because we're going to be actually run, launching this from Visual Studio. And then build configuration release, I think it's fine. So let's go ahead and go into player settings now and let's look at a couple more things. So the other things that I also had to do in order to make it work is I went into XR settings. And make sure that you have the window selected. I did virtual reality support it, and I also enable and added the mixed reality, the Windows mixed reality component to the list of SDKs. And it's gonna take some time to import it, but once you get imported, you're gonna get something like this is deprecated, and that's because Microsoft and, and actually Unity is moving to more of an X, XR plugin management. So what I'll do, I'll do another video to show you how to do that process as well. For now, let's just get it working so that you get familiar with the process. And then we get these. I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. And the other thing that I, need to, I needed to do is make sure that you change this to 16, 16 bit depth. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to work. I, I, I wasn't able to make it work. And then everything else in here should be fine. So under the publishing settings, the only thing that I had to do is I had to just enable a couple of these capabilities. I think the one that I did is a spatial perception, which looks like it's already enabled. And then the other one was access to a microphone. I don't know why I needed access to a microphone, but I enabled it anyways. And I think that's everything that we need to do. If you want to change the packaging, you can change the packaging, also the versioning, and, and I think, you know, also if you want to do the company name and the product name. So that's everything that we need to do here. I think in other settings, I didn't change anything in there, so we should be okay as far as that goes. And the next thing that you need to do is you need to just build it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Switch Platform first because I needed to do that before. So once you click on Switch Platform, we're going to be able to build it. And that is going to create a solution and, and a project for the solution that we need to use to build to the device. 
So it looks like the switch platform completed and I got this pop-up saying that everything is properly configured. So this is good because it tells me that we set up everything correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. And now we should have the build and build and run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on build. And I'm going to select the folder on perhaps on my desktop. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder and it's gonna be our HoloLens demo. And it looks like I already have one named that. So let's go ahead and do Holo lens builds we can go ahead and go into it and now we can select that folder as the build output i'm going to click on select and that's going to start generating all the files that we're going to need all right guys so it looks like this finished building so i'm going to go ahead and open that folder and you can see that it created a solution and also a folder and this is a c project so that's why we needed the c components in visual studio i'm going to go ahead and click on open it should open up visual studio 2019 so the first thing that I opened Visual Studio with that solution, I got a pop-up saying that I was missing some components. So if you're missing anything, make sure that you do install the components and then close Visual Studio, reopen Visual Studio, and then everything should work after that. So if we look at this, now we have our project right here. We have everything that we need. The other thing that I also needed to do is I needed to make sure that my device was connected via USB-C. So one thing that I had to do is I had to actually, you know, make sure that that was accurate, otherwise it wasn't working. So I was trying to do it over the air. I couldn't get it to work quite well. So I ended up just doing the USB-C and everything worked well that way. So one thing that you need to do here is you need to make sure that you change this to device. And then I also, this didn't work with ARM. I had to do ARM64 and that was the architecture that actually worked. If I was using ARM, I was getting a bunch of errors. So make sure that you do ARM64, and then click on play, and that should be able to device. So we'll, we should be able to see if everything works as soon as we see a successful message. All right, guys, so it looks like this was successful. Everything loaded correctly, and now it's launching on my device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing by just casting to my computer. All right, guys, so let me show you how this experience worked now that I have it running on my device. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into all apps. I'm also going to be, you know, finding our HoloLens experience. So we can say, hello, Holo. It's going to go ahead and open. All right, so it looks like everything loaded correctly. I can now, I can also see my hands. And it's a little bit slow because I'm trying to do casting and at the same time, you know, interacting with the object, but everything is working. I just wanted to show you that this piece, you know, works. I show you this experience already in the beginning, but if you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. And I'm also going to give you, let me actually tell you a little bit more of some other things that you might need to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of this. So the other thing that you might need to do as well is you need to go and develop and enable developer options. So I'm gonna go into settings here. And you need to do that on your device and also in here. So to do it here, you need to go into developer settings and make sure you set developer mode. On the HoloLens, you need to do it a little bit different and, and that is going to be under updates. And then if you go under updates, you should see the same setting. Just make sure that you enable developer mode in both, you know, in both devices in your computer that is pushing also the HoloLens device itself. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I know there's a lot to, to this, but I'm gonna be putting the, basically all these links that I was referring to in the description of this video. So thank you very much, guys.